there has been a purchase. Welcome to another episode of Learning to Fly. It's Ben here and I just want to go through my kit bag this week. Something that actually has changed quite a lot over the process of learning to fly. You need different things at different times. Now I have my license. I have my license, which is one of the things I check in my kit bag. It does, it changes. Your kit bag changes throughout your, your learning period. So wherever, wherever you're at, on your journey to learning to fly, or if you've got your license, hopefully some things here you can pick up on and go, yeah, okay, that's quite interesting, or maybe I'll take that, or actually, why don't you put a comment below and tell me things that, why don't you chuck this in the kit bag next time? And I'll definitely consider those things. We'll start with the absolute fundamentals. This is actually a legal requirement. You've got to fly with a current chart. So I've got a half mil here, uh, purely because it's smaller and I very rarely need it. But if I do, it's fine and I can use it and we'll chuck that in the bag. So that has to come with us legally. We've got to take one of those up. So that's good to have. Next up probably is that an e-board wouldn't really fly without it. Always got a big biro for me. It's got to be a big every single time. Spares go in the bag as well. So I've always got two bics and I've got uh, a Sharpie that I take in. Okay, so they go in the bag. Uh, this is a Pulley's miniature knee board. It's the smallest one they do. It's got some other stuff on there, the phonetic alphabet, squawk, codes, and whatever you want. Quite useful. So that goes in. This is here, I use pe paper. And that's such a simple thing. Chuck paper in your bag. I've always got a bit of paper in my bag because the amount of times I've gone to a lesson with a knee board and not had any paper. What use is having a knee board with nothing on it? Not a lot. Um, so rather than nicking it from the flying schools printer, which they were probably hate you for, chuck some paper in your bag. That's really important. On top of that, I obviously take my phone fully charged because in the C42, I can use it with Sky Demon, which I'll show some screenshots of what that looks like. That is absolute must for me. I know there's Runway HD, and if you want to use Full Flight, you can use that as well, I think, in the UK. But yeah, I, I use Sky Demon on my iPhone 11, and it works really well in the C42. There's a phone mount there. In the Sky Ranger, I generally use the iPad. On top of that, though, with Kemble Flying Club, I can actually book into the aircraft and book the aircraft itself for whenever I want to fly via the flightschoolbooking.com system. If that is something that you're interested in, maybe you run a flying school yourself, definitely go check that out because you can like have the logbooks stored all online and the aircraft log all online as well as service log and everything you could imagine plus the actual simplicity of just being able to book the aircraft when you want online is lovely and then on the day you can book in and out of the actual aircraft as well via your phone so definitely phone has to be in the bag if i'm going on a slightly longer journey i'll be definitely taking the ipad so this is an ipad mini and with it, I take the iPad knee board, which is a Pulley's mini iPad knee board, which can change its orientation if you want it, whichever way, it goes on your thigh. It does the job really well. It's about 29 quid. I'll put a link in the description below for that. If I'm gonna take the iPad, there's one thing I have to take, and it's my GPS module. This is something I got from Rory on Air, who again, I'll link his channel in the description below if you haven't watched his videos before. It's a GNS 2000, and this product is brilliant. It turns any Wi-Fi only iPad into a GPS capable iPad for the sake of 80 odd quid. It's been an absolute godsend, especially on my Navexes. I wouldn't fly without it. Next up, we're gonna to have to talk about this. This is the audio kit. Um, I've done a video on this before, bundles of stuff, zoom. Really important kit, okay? I love it, it's brilliant. It records audio really well. Most of the time, I'll link in the top right now of a video I've previously done on this, on what exact kit I use. Plus Rory On Air again has done a video on exactly this kit. And it was his video that actually made me buy all this kit. So I'll link that video as well. But I wouldn't want to record audio in any other way. It's more flexible, it's better. You can change the audio settings and everything. It's great, I love it a bit. But I won't talk too much about that now. I mean, I carry more than this, but I put this here to remind me. Yes, definitely take batteries. Double A's for headsets, triple A's for audio recording kit. On top of that, the cameras. Everyone assumes that I use GoPros. I don't. 
GoPros are too expensive for what they do, personally. That's what I'm, I mean, it's a massive pull. That is a big pull, that. I don't, I take two cameras with me. I'll get to exactly what they're called in a minute. And again, I'll link these in the description below, but I would recommend them. You've seen the quality. Every single video I've done has used these two cameras. They are Yi, um, that's how I'm going with it. Y I. Y I, man? Yi cameras. So they're spelled Y I. You see that? It's the back of the camera. Yi HD 1080p action cams. You can only watch a YouTube video up to 1080p, which is high definition. 720p is high definition, but 1080 is the highest high definition you can get on YouTube. 4K, wasted time. Kind of. So why get? a 600 pound camera when you can spend 50 quid that's what one of these was and you get the case as well they've worked really well and i honestly wouldn't look back i've got the head mount one which is fine but i must admit it does hurt the top of my head sometimes actually after a while i'm not gonna lie so yes i would like to find alternative mounting methods which i do also chuck in the back on top of that, I take a second camera, which has a suction cup mount, which is good. It works, you get quite a bit of vibration though if you attach it to the screen of the C42 or the side or somewhere else. It's quite hard to find a steady area to get a second angle from, which is really important. On top of that, sticking with cameras, I actually take a steady cam, a Vilta M, Free Vision Vilta M. I love a review and I checked out loads of them and this was pretty much the best one for under 100 quid and it is very good and you can see shots like this. So you can see it's really silky smooth and it just turns a mobile phone into actually a really decent camera. So chuffed with that as well. So yes, Free Vision Vilta M Steadicam does a good job, but I haven't used it as much as probably I should. If you wanna plan your flights properly, these two things, if you're learning to fly, you know what these are. Yeah, chuck them in your bag. And then worst case scenario, if you have to go old school with the navigation, you know where you're at. Logbook, it's a Microlite one. There's very subtle changes between a GA one and a Microlite one. So yeah, do that. Which brings me nicely onto headsets. Your headset is probably the biggest single purchase in aviation other than the plane itself, or maybe an annual membership to a club or whatever. I've got two headsets now. Yeah, I know, big deal. I've been learning pretty much most of the time with my Sate headset and I honestly, I'll put again, link in the description below. They've been amazing. They've been so comfortable. These things, they're pretty much new. It's not a tremendous amount of force over the years, of course, for active noise reduction, a and R. You have to clamp on the ear a bit just so you can seal off the ear cup and yeah the a and is pretty good I, I, you know it's fine and i've been using these they're very comfortable i don't mind them that with the head cam you do get a bit of pressure on top of your head but other than that i'm pretty happy with them and i will continue to use them however i was looking on ebay my girlfriend daisy she said she was hurt her head was hurting from using the the school's headsets that's fine okay that's what happens they're cheap headsets they've got to be you buy a lot of them there has been a purchase thanks ebay uh, i got these guy off a guy called jordan who actually does watch the channel which is hilarious so hi jordan if you're watching um he doesn't use them anymore whatever i managed to pick these up for 500 quid which is literally half price of the new ones i know these aren't new these i, I don't know how might be a few years old or whatever, but they're in pristine nick. They're in really good condition. Bose A20s, if you don't know, they're like the god headphones. They're about as good as it gets, really. There. This clamping force on your head is disconcertingly light. There is, it's like there's nothing there. You feel like you've got to put them on, press them on to make sure they're on, but they are. I haven't tried them yet, but when I do, you'll definitely have a review on the channel because is it worth spending a thousand pounds new on a pair of Bose A20s? I actually didn't think it was, and I haven't yet. 500 quid, we'll see if it's worth a purchase. Something tells me this will be quite good. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I think that's everything that goes in my kit bag. I've probably forgotten something. 
um, obviously wallet. Um, oh, that was another thing, a watch. Desperately, it doesn't have to be expensive. This isn't a decent watch just so you can track when your engine was switched on and when your engine was switched off in case your iPad dies because Sky Demon tracks your en engine log times and stuff. It's totally worth having a watch. It's one of the things that actually is really, really helpful. Sunglasses, they go in the car. I have got a light, tiny, mild prescription that goes on and yeah, fine, I've put the sunglasses. They're always living in the car anyway. Yeah, that's pretty much everything I take. I mean, I've probably forgotten something, but it, it totally helps having a really nicely organized kit bag of everything you take at the same time. Consistency is king, isn't it, with this stuff? So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much again for watching. Do subscribe. I want to do much more of this kind of stuff. We'll do a review of the Bose 20s. Are they any good? They'll be good. But are they worth the money? That's more the question. And uh, yeah, we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.